Hello, my name is Rachel and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I wanted to go through with you a review on Barclays Smart Investor. Now I have had my Smart Investor account for around about three years now. I started off very, very slowly with investing and investing small amounts and then slowly have started to invest more over the last couple of years. Um, so this review is completely impartial and I'm obviously not being sponsored and this is all just my opinions on on Barclays um, and the Smart Investor Service. I have opened up an account with Fidelity recently, an ISA account um, for this financial year, just to see how they compare. And then I also have my children's investment junior ISAs with Hargreaves Lansdowne. So I have used different platforms and I can say that for me personally, the Barclays Smart Investor account has been good and positive. So in today's video, I want to give you as thorough a review as I possibly can. So I will be running through with you customer service, ease of use, um, the availability of different funds, trusts and ETFs and shares as well. And then also just finally covering fees as well, because I know that that's really important to a lot of people, particularly when you're considering compounding interest and how fees will impact on your investment as a whole overall. So to start with customer service, I have found customer service to be really, really good with Barclays Smart Investor. They're obviously a very big bank here in the UK. I found it a really quick process to set up my investment ISA with Barclays in the first place. So it was very, very quickly done in a matter of days. And then my ongoing customer service has been really good. I think it really depends on how you like to use a customer service. But for me, the customer service with Barclays has been very, very good. And the reason that it's been good for me is I like to use the chat service online um, where they have advisors available to talk to you very quickly. So normally if I go into the chat service online and ask a question, however silly that question might be, there's always someone there within a couple of minutes to respond to me and give me further detail on what I'm looking for. Um, this has always been a really, really a quick service for me and I find it really, really helpful. Um, I think when you're new to investing, um, like I was a couple of years ago, and I still would say I am definitely still new to investing now, it's really helpful to have an advisor there at your fingertips to be able to help you with any questions. They might be questions on how to use the platform and how um, to invest in specific funds. There might be questions I've asked them about withdrawing funds and how long that process will take, um, different things like that. Um, I always find them to be really, really helpful and really, really fast at getting back to you. It is within a matter of minutes normally. So very good customer service from that side of things. I haven't, just to be honest, used their telephone customer service or anything like that because I found the chat service to be so quick and easy. Um, so I can't tell you how the telephone service or email service is, but for me, the chat service is pretty much instantaneous or a couple of minutes and has been great. So the next thing I want to talk you through is ease of use. So I find that it is very easy to use this website. It's very user friendly. Everything appears where it should appear. And then I think in terms of what you're actually using the website for, you're probably looking for different funds, ETFs, trusts or shares to invest in. And the search tool I find to be very, very good on their website. So you can search under different criteria. So for example, you can search through sector. If there's a specific sector that you're interested in investing in, you can search through fund managers. So you might prefer certain fund managers and want to invest in those. You can search through that. You can also search through crown rating and then also past performance. Um, you can set that as well. So you can have a look at all of those different criteria and set those and then filter your results that way. So I found that to be very, very good. All of the documents that you would expect to find are available so you can find annual report you can find key investor information documents very very easily they're all available um, to download and to have a look at so everything is in the place that you would expect it to be the only thing that i would say that is often very important to people is that there is no specific barclays smart investor app um, if you have a barclays bank account you can log into the barclays app and you will be able to see your investments on there. However, if you don't have a bank account with Barclays, which I don't, then you will not be able to use the standard Barclays app to access your investments. And like some of the other companies, so for example, Hargreaves Lansdowne has its own app, Fidelity has its own app, so you can kind of get to your investments at a touch of a button through those apps. 
Barclays doesn't have that option if you don't have a bank account with them, but I have spoken to them and they have said that that's something that they're working on. Um, so hopefully that should be available soon and mean that I can have a look at my investments on an app. Um, I would caveat that by saying that actually for me it's not that important because I am not really trading on a regular basis. I would say that Barclays Smart Investor is very good if you are looking to hold on to your investments for the medium to long term um, and you can actually use their website on your phone anyway which is often what I do and it's really user friendly. There doesn't seem to be any glitches or any issues with using the website on your phone instead. So it's not like I can't access my investments uh, very easily because I can, I can still do it on my phone. It's just maybe not quite as simple as it would be with an app. But to me, that doesn't really bother me. But if that's really important to you, then it might be something worth considering. So the next one that I'm going to cover is availability of funds, ETF, trusts, and then also shares. Now, I started using a Barclays Smart Investor, as I said, a few years ago, and I have found the availability of funds to be really, really good. So they have over 2000 different funds from 60 different fund managers. So lots of availability. They have a lot of the funds that I like to invest in. Um, so examples of these might be the Bailey Gifford American Fund. Um, they also so you have Black Rockwell Technology. They have a huge array of funds that you can invest in. They also have a huge amount of trusts and ETFs as well. So they have the Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust, which I know I think is probably um, one of the most popular trusts available. So they have a huge amount of funds and trusts available to you. The one area where I would say there's probably less variety is in the shares and the shares that are available to buy. So they do have over a thousand uh, shares available for you to buy, which is brilliant. They're all listed on the London Stock Exchange. I do have a few shares um, with Barclays. Um, I have them in my SIP actually, but I personally choose to invest in shares outside of Barclays purely because of the fees involved and then also because there isn't quite as much availability as there is on other apps for example trading 212 or free trade there are a few more shares um, available to buy on there but over a thousand is still really really good um, and as I said I don't really use my Barclays Smart Investor account to invest in sh individual shares it's more for funds trusts and ETFs that I plan to hold for the long term um, so yeah, I, it doesn't bother me that there is less variety of shares available, but still over a thousand shares available is still very, very positive. And then the last thing that I'm going to run you through is fees, because I know that that can be so, so important for so many people when making their decision about who to put their investment ISA with. Um, so fees, I'm literally just going to read you them off the website just to make sure, um, that I am saying them accurately. Um, so there is a 0.2% per annum fee on funds and 0.1% per annum fee on other investments. Now, the only thing that I would say in the side to this is there is a four pound minimum monthly fee. So if you're investing a very small amount of money, then four pounds a month could really eat into that and it would work out as a bigger amount than just that 0.2 or 0.1% a year. So it's just worth considering um, that if you're choosing to invest a smaller amount. The maximum fee per month is £125, which luckily I am nowhere near that at the moment. Um, then there's separate transaction fees. I, as I said, choose to invest mainly in funds on Barclays Smart Investors. So the tra transaction fee for that is three pounds every time you invest. And then when you take that money out, it is three pounds as well. Other investments, so if you're choosing to invest in shares, for example, are six pounds per transaction. So putting them in and taking them out would be six pounds each time. Um, automated regular investments, which I don't do with Barclays Smart Investor are one pounds. And then if you want to do it on the telephone, there is that option, but it will cost you much more money. So it will be £25 if you choose to do it over the telephone. Um, so yeah, the fees are not too bad in comparison to some of the other larger um, investment platforms. So you would be looking at with other investment platforms, a sort of 0.4% per annum charge. So um, they do tend to be a bit higher. There's obviously lots and lots of different ones. 
I actually do have a separate video on different investment ISAs where I compare all the different fees available and all the different functionality and availability of different funds, um, stocks and shares. So if you want to watch that video, I will link it down below um, if you want to compare fees in a bit more detail. Um, but that's just the kind of upfront top line fees that you would expect to pay with Barclays Smart Investor. Um, so yeah, I hope you found this video useful. As I said, I've really enjoyed bar using Barclays Smart Investor. I still have um, money invested with Barclays Smart Investor and will continue to into the future, as well as trying other options as well for different accounts too. But yeah, I'm very happy with them. So if you found this video useful, it'd be awesome if you would subscribe to this channel and like this video. Um, I haven't got an awful lot of subscribers, um, so it'd be awesome if you fancy joining me um, with these videos. And I hope you found this useful. Any questions, as always, please do pop them down in the comments down below. I'm not a financial advisor or a financial planner. I am just a beginner who is interested in investing. So um, I will try to answer your questions or um, give you some information about where to go to get the best answer. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a lovely, lovely week. All the best. Bye bye.